talking first about the on, about on grid car generation, and um, you'll just see the status of on grid. We'll run through the challenges as well. Um, second is the off grid potential in Nigeria as of today. Um, we'll also talk about the challenges facing the sector from an off grid perspective, and then we'll look at the way forward. We'll take questions. Um, the preference is that we take questions after Dr. Yusuf comes up to um, do his presentation. So this is essentially a fact sheet for on-grid power generation in Nigeria. And um, just to mention that access to electricity as of today is about 55%, about 78% in urban areas, and 40% in rural areas. Um, current issues with on-grid power generation. I will not take too much of our time on these slides because we all know what the issues are, but I will mention them. Um, lack of cost-reflective tariffs, um, significant shortfall in the sector, which um, is estimated in the PSRP to be over 450 billion um, between February 2015 and 2016. Um, another issue is the foreign exchange issue in the sector in terms of um, the discrepancy between the foreign exchange index in the MITO and what the parallel market says. Um, electricity theft is another issue and we do not have the legislation. Transmission issues as well. Um, total collapse as of today is about 13, partial about 6 for the year 2017 alone. Um, there are also gas issues, non-bankability or commercial agreements in the transitional electricity market. Um, distribution issues, apart from the issues I've mentioned above, there are also other issues that the distribution company face. Okay, so off-grid potential. Um, in terms of what we have currently, uh, NERC has approved about 433 megawatts of generation capacity for off-grid. Um, we also have about 133 megawatts for embedded generation, but the question is how much of this is really operational as of today? Um, some are in development stage, some have begun to operate, but clearly because the access to electricity in the rural area is still far, is still below 40%, we know that there's a long way that we have to go. Um, rural electrification as well, um, just to mention, that an estimated average of about $2 billion is required annually until 2030 to achieve viability and to achieve um, uh, proper electrification in the rural areas. So again, we have a long way to go. Um, the Rural Electrification Fund is also expected to come on stream by the end of 2017. Uh, it would be nice for Dr. Yusuf to tell us where we are on that. Okay, so this slide talks about the regulatory framework for off-grid generation. And essentially, this, this, these are regulations that are currently in place in the off-grid sector. As we go along, we will understand whether these are sufficient or um, whether they give some incentive to, regulate, to, to project developers. Um, first is the captive power generation, and um, this is generation exceeding one megawatt, but it has to be by the generator itself. So it's self-generation. As a captive generator, you're not allowed to, um, to sell to third parties. However, NERC allows that you can sell uh, an amount that is not exceeding one megawatt, subject to its approval. So key highlights of this regulation, the fact that there are fewer regulatory hurdles is very important and is an incentive to potential investors because all you need is a permit from NERC and you don't have to go through the hurdle of licensing and all of that. Um, two is embedded power generation and um, this speaks to a generation unit that is connected to a distribution um, network and evacuated through that distribution network. Uh, highlights of the regulation, the fact that you are able to sell excess power to third parties, including IDNs in the distribution company's network, including the distribution company itself, that's an incentive. Um, another is the fact that there's reduced losses and reduced cost of transmission infrastructure. 
because um, the embedded generator is not typically expected to um, typically expected to invest in the distribution network. So the focus is really on the embedded generation companies' um, needs rather than the distribution companies' needs. So you you don't particularly bother yourself so much with um, the distribution infrastructure of the distribution company. However, we just need to know that this is this is contractual because it depends on what the distribution company um, requires or what the parties negotiate in their agreement. Um, something that is very important on embedded generation as well is the fact that um, you are able to negotiate tariff, and NERC is happy to approve tariffs that are that are fair. So it's not strictly regulated under the MITO. Um, the next regulation that we talk about is the NERC Independent Electricity Distribution Network Regulation. That's the IEDN regulation. Um, IEDN regulation is a regulation that covers a number of um, independent net distribution networks. So one is the um, an isolated off-grid uh, off-grid IEDN, and this is an IEDN that is in a rural area that is not covered by the distribution network. Another is isolated off-grid urban IEDN. And this is, this is an IEDN that is in an urban area, not covered by the distribution network. Um, the third category is the embedded IEDN. And for embedded IEDN, the, the IEDN is connected to the distribution company's network. So those are the three categories covered. Um, the key thing under, uh, under this um, IEDN is that it guarantees wider access to electricity. So areas that are underserved or areas that are not served at all by the distribution companies have the opportunity to have IEDNs in their networks. And given the access, given the um, percentage of, of uh, access to electricity, especially in the rural areas, there's a lot of potential. Okay, next is um, NERC Renewable Energy Feeding Tariff Regulations. And what this feeding tariff regulation basically does is that it helps the project developer to recoup, um, to recoup its investment. So it, it to a large extent, it guarantees return on investment. Um, the eligible renewable sources include wind, and that covers about 1 to 10 megawatts, small hydro, one to about 30 megawatts, um, biomass, that's one to 10 megawatts as well, and solar, solar is one to five megawatts. Um, another key thing that we want to mention here is the fact that there's a guaranteed market for project developers. So 50% has to be uh, purchased by NBT, and 50% has to be purchased by the distribution companies. So there's guaranteed markets. Um, for mini grid regulations, that's number five. Uh, the key thing to mention here is the fact that this regulation has just been um, passed, and mini grid systems are systems that include both generation and distribution. So they have a distribution component and they have a generation component, and um, you cannot go beyond one megawatt. So um, highlights of this includes the fact that you can either be a registered mini grid operator or you can obtain a permit. Now, this depends on, on the capacity. So if you are doing um, below 100 kilowatts of distribution capacity, all you need is really to register with NERC. If you are doing above 100 kilowatts, between that and one megawatt of um, generation, you need to obtain a permit. One key thing again is the fact that obtaining a permit is an incentive because if the distribution company wants to um, wants to expand its distribution network to the area that you're operating, you are able to get compensation from the distribution company. Yes, finally here is the Ministerial Directive on Eligible Customers. So there are four categories of end users, um, as we may know, that can buy directly from the distribution companies. Um, first is end users whose consumption is not less than 2 megawatts and they are connected to 11 kV or 33 kV 
um, distribution networks. End users connected to 132 kV or 330, uh, 330 kV. End users with consumption over 2 megawatts every month connected to a 33 kV line. End users with consumption over 2 megawatts per hour for one month and connected to the meter of a Genco. Now, the, the interesting thing is that NERC plans to issue regulations for the eligible customers to birth the eligible customers directly. So that would be very interesting to see um, in terms of implementation and um, the, the surrounding um, regulations. So a few available opportunities for the off-grid um, sector. One is the ability to power government facilities. So a lot of state governments now are um, beginning to take advantage of the off-grid off potential. So they power street lights, they power their hospitals, their schools using off-grid solutions. And this has been beneficial. Um, second is public-private partnerships with state governments. An example is the Light Up Lagos initiative that is powering um, Lagos State through embedded power generation. So that's quite interesting. Um, and, and again, just to mention, many of these, many of the other state governments are also doing this, and they're in development stage. And there's an opportunity for um, project developers to benefit from this because the projects are not yet um, fully formed. Uh, potential to grow industrial cl clusters and small cottage industry. This is very key as well. And the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria is is is. Um, is really leading the way, I would say, in this. They have um, a good number of projects. An example is the uh, macro project that is being developed. Um, opportunity to power residential premises and clusters. This is very key as well. Um, there are now homes that they, they strictly live on solar power generation or some other renewables. And you know there's no need to, to bother with the grid as such. Or, well, we, we, we have some projects that we're working on that um, there's, it's a mix, but more reliance is on off-grid than grid power. So um, rural electrification is another key um, opportunity here where you're able to use mini grids and standalone systems um, to power rural areas. Um, another key opportunity is captive power generation for industry. A lot of companies have developed um, their own captive power plants and some of them are also able to, um, to sell an excess within NERC's, within NERC's um, permission to third parties. Opportunity to expand and refurbish distribution networks. This is very key. Um, there are a number of IEDNs that are connected to um, off-grid off, off IPPs. There are IEDNs that are also embedded. These are, they, these are opportunities to expand distribution networks and to um, widen the power reach. Um, expansion of disco networks as well through embedded generation and interconnected mini-grid. This is also um, very important because for embedded, um, embedded generation, the discos may sometimes have incentives to, um, to expand their distribution network, probably because the um, tariff is competitive enough or it's, um, I would say, it incentivizes them to expand their networks to be able to accommodate the project. So these are things that um, will expand disco networks. Opportunity to explore renewables is another key one here. A lot of off-grid project developers are considering renewables, including solar, biomass, um, wind. So these are just examples of standalone systems in Nigeria. Lumos, um, Lumos, Energy, Azuri. Uh, but the, 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 the thing again is whether these are sustainable and what the extent of um, uh, energy efficiency and responsibility the customers themselves have because sometimes you find that these um, these customers who take on these standalone systems they are actually told that 
you cannot, you cannot buy a generator, for example. You cannot um, power these on a generator, but they, they tend to use those. And, you know, so this, this is not typically sustainable, but it could help to an extent, at least to power the, the homes. So challenges with off-grid generation. First is regulatory framework. There's some uncertainty and lack of clarity as to where we really stand in off-grid IPP, especially um, capacities that go above the captive power generation, um, ca captive power generation bracket. Uh, no regulation specifically covering, covering those except captive, mini-grid, embedded. Uh, resistance or objections from existing monopolies. It's, it's a bit difficult to know where next stands in terms of issuing off-grid licenses, and this is basically because NERC is usually careful to, um, to make sure that the market share of discos are not eroded. At the same time, NERC also wants to expand access to electricity, so it would be good to understand how NERC is able to strike that balance. Uh, te technology gap and lack of skilled manpower, and this is very critical, especially um, as it relates to renewables in terms of operating the systems and um, maintaining the technologies. Off-taker credibility, this is a very major issue. Uh, and it's an issue that also, that also affects funding for off-grid. So this affects in terms of rural areas, urban areas, wherever off-grid is, uh, is, is, um, is to be used, it's an issue. Uh, access to financing as well because there's high cost of capital to, um, to use certain types of renewables. There's also that issue of procuring um, long-term financing. So the way forward. Um, one is, it's very important that we have um, certainty as to the regulatory framework for off-grid so that we are able to know for certain that these are the parameters to be granted um, off-grid licenses. These are the um, these are the limits of the powers. These are the things that they can do. It just brings certainty, and it also gives um, investors confidence. Development of human capacity and technological know-how for technologies that we do not particularly have expertise in Nigeria. Increased incentives, including government support and um, tax incentives, they will definitely incentivize investment. Issuance of electricity theft legislation. This is very key because um, it, it promotes um, responsibility from the customer perspective. So if there is a, an electricity theft regulation, the project developers also have the opportunity to prosecute the customers for any um, type of maybe meter, tampering, or whatever it is. Uh, another is more participation of state governments in off-grid projects. This is very key, especially because the constitution permits state governments to, um, to make regulations in areas that are not covered by the grid. So there's, there's really no excuse for, for state governments not to, um, to, to take prominent um, roles in this aspect. Active um, NERC's provision of interim permit for captive generators to sell excess power. So some captive generators typically have excess power that go beyond one megawatt and they then typically need to, um, to, to procure licenses, generator licenses from NERC. This could take a long time and of course stranded power continues, a lot of money continues to be, um, to be lost. So it's very important that NERC comes up with some um, strategy to give an approval that, okay, you can go ahead and sell this while we, um, we sort out your licensing. Uh, government's facilitation of funding for off-grid projects, this is very important because it helps, um, it helps even the financiers to know that, yes, we can actually fund this project because there's government backing. It's been said that it will be ready by the fund will be established by 27 by the end of 2017. Um, it will be good for this to really be established. Thank you.
um, 